Um, hello, everyone. My name is Chelsea Parsons, and I am a consultant with GuideHouse, supporting CDC's One Lab initiative. I have a couple notes about the webinar before we get started today. If you have any technical issues throughout the session, uh, we'll be monitoring our inbox. It's onelab at cdc.gov. That's onelab at cdc.gov. If you have questions throughout the presentation, um, you can input those into the Q&A. So in the bottom ribbon of your screen, you'll see a Q&A function. That's where you can submit questions about the presentation to our presenter. We'll be monitoring those throughout and making sure that we tally some up for the Q&A session we'll have at the end. If for any reason we don't get to your question today, we'll try to hold on to those and respond to you via email as long as you do not submit them anonymously. And you can always email our inbox again at onelab at cdc.gov if questions arise later on. Note that I've posted the link to live captions in the chat. Um, so if you uh, would like to access live captions today, those will be available uh, during the entire event. The only thing to note is that if you're going to use those, you'll want to keep that page pulled up as well as um, this webinar itself. All right, let's take a look at the agenda for today. So we're going to start the session by talking about some new and relevant OneLab resources. We'll introduce you to our special presenter for today. Um, we'll get into the main presentation, a laboratory onboarding template, which was pilot tested by the Guam Public Health Laboratory. And then we'll get to that Q&A section that I mentioned before. Uh, we'll try to get through all or as many questions as we can. Um, if we have some time, we might talk through some discussion questions as a group as well. And then we'll tell you about some upcoming events that we have going on. Um, so something else we have been doing in our events lately, and you may have noticed, is turning on the chat so that you guys are able to interact with one another as well. So we'll be leaving the chat feature open today for your engagement, um, but just a few things to keep in mind when utilizing the chat box. Um, please keep in mind the appropriate rules of engagement. You can feel free to use the chat to connect with others by reacting to what you're hearing, sharing experiences, and asking questions to fellow participants. However, if you have a question for the presenter regarding the content, please use the Q&A function function, not the chat. Um, please engage with respect and professionalism. Any inappropriate language, improper conduct, or any form of discrimination may result in removal from the webinar. And please ensure your comments are relevant to the topic. Um, if a moderator does give you direction regarding chat behavior, please comply accordingly. We hope that you use this chat to interact with one another to talk about uh, what we're chatting about in today's topic, but we don't want it to become a distraction. Um, so lastly, please notify moderators if you experience any technical difficulties or observe any disruptive behavior. So now I'm going to turn it over to our OneLab Network lead, Ms. Alicia Branch, to share some of our new and relevant resources and introduce us to today's speaker. Alicia? Thanks, Chelsea. Before the main presentation, I would like to take a moment to share some helpful OneLab Network resources. Today, our speaker will share her experience using the Customizable CDC laboratory onboarding template, which can be used to develop a structured and streamlined process for onboarding new laboratory employees. Scan the QR code on the screen to refer to the template throughout this webinar. Next slide, please. We also want to highlight the one lab basic microscopy micro learning videos where you can learn or, you know, not just learn, but refresh your knowledge of the fundamentals of microscope. Um, it talks about how to clean the microscope, the how to focus the microscope, illumination, the components of the microscope, as well as calibration and how to set up the microscope. Next slide, please. If you have not already, we ask that you go to OneLab Reach, which is a customizable learning management system for laboratory professionals and our testing community to create a free account. You can uh, create this account by scanning the QR code on the screen. Next slide, please. Now I would like to read a couple of disclaimers and then we will introduce today's speaker. Slide decks may contain presentation material from a panelist who are not affiliated with CDC presentation content, from external panelists it may not necessarily reflect CDC's official position on the topics covered. Next slide, please. CDC, our planners or our presenters wish to disclose that we do not have any financial interests or other relationships with the manufacturers of commercial products, suppliers of commercial services, 
uh, co or commercial supporters. Next slide, please. And I am excited to introduce our presenter for today, Dr. Mukta Basarati. She is a laboratory director for the Guam Public Health Laboratory. She's contracted to Guam by the Chickasaw Nation Industries in support of the CDC TAP program. Mukta has been overseeing the overall management and administration of the Guam Public Health Laboratory since July of 2021. Guam hasn't had a full-time lab director for the past 20 years, and with the help of the, CDC, of the CDC funding, she's provided support and assistance to Guam as their remote full-time laboratory director. Munga has over 13 years of experience working in clinical diagnostic laboratories, academia, biopharma, biopharma industry, and is eager to expand her expand the Guam Public Health Laboratory capabilities. She's excited to share the recent new employee onboarding process implemented with the help of the CDC One Lab Laboratory onboarding template. Our presenter for today is Dr. Mugda Vasarati. Hello everyone, it is my pleasure to be here today to speak about our experience implementing onboarding manual at Guam Public Health Laboratory. Next slide, please. So when onboarding a new employee, it is absolutely important that there is effective communication between the employee and the hiring manager and the partners, um, lab partners. It's also essential that in this case, if it is a laboratory that they have an employee orientation them to navigate the lab and the, their duties as well as the functions of the lab. A lab tour is a must, as you all know that, you know, entry, exit, what are the restricted areas, how to enter them, what is the PPE used. So a lab tour that gives you a complete understanding of the functioning of a lab is also quite important in that first uh, few days of um, the new hire onboarding. It is also, I think, uh, extremely important to have a mentor, not in the form of just a supervisor, but also a lab partner who could help them on a daily basis for the first couple of weeks to be able to adjust to the environment so that there are no mistakes made and there's always um, they are always protected, the, the patient information is protected, and also the, the co-workers are protected. So, so it's important to set them up or pair them up with uh, the lab partner who can help them um, navigate the, their duties as well as the, the lab responsibilities. It is uh, essential to give a learning time for each individual because there are people who learn pretty quickly and then there are some who take a little bit of time. But allowing them to take their time, a reasonable amount of time to be able to understand day-to-day -day happenings will really help the person integrate into the organization. And then eventually um, giving them a, a learning assessment also helps you to understand where they are at their understanding level and how well they can now uh, do their function, job duties and responsibilities. Next slide, please. So when we just started, um, when I just started working with Guam, um, what we had basically in place in Guam Public Health Laboratory is the employee handbook. This employee handbook applies to everybody in, on, that come under Department of Public Health and uh, Social Services. So this handbook is a very general handbook that was provided to um, every employee that is onboarded. Now, this handbook um, does go through a lot of important details that are very specific to the agency as a whole, but not the lab specifically. Then eventually the lab supervisor or a lab partner usually uh, will give them a lab tour, explain all the do's and don'ts of the lab, and also help them with some of the few basic uh, things that they need to be aware of while working in the lab. However, we did not have uh, a specific onboarding template just for the lab. So um, 
for most part, um, it, in statewide, you would see that in a lab, there is a good amount of individuals who have had experience working in a lab previously that would um, come into a state lab um, or, or local labs, and they would have some experience working in a different lab. So if it is a clinical diagnostic lab, maybe they do come with some experience that gives them a basic understanding of what a clinical lab entails. However, with Guam, we noticed in the past couple of years, we have most of our staff retired. We have expanded so much that now we are bringing in new workforce and most of the workforce is fresh out of school workforce who only have experience working in most likely a research lab. And we all know research labs are completely different from a clinical lab. So, so keeping into, uh, keeping, considering the demographic of the Guam staff was also extremely important for us because that allows us to understand what understanding they then the new staff have. And then what I did was, so all of this began when Alicia reached out to me at one of the one of the meetings I attended and introduced me to One Lab Network and the resources that we could actually uh, are available for us to utilize in the lab. Um, and so it was a great opportunity for me in the first place to be able to have something that really helps uh, to set it up without having to start everything from scratch. So having a template really helped me to go about thinking what needs to go into our own manual using that template. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the template, um, the link to the template is in the QR code and that I would I would encourage everybody to go through it and see if, you, if you're organization has something already in place like that, that's very good. If you don't, or if you don't have few things that are actually in the template, that might actually help you introduce some of them into your organizational manual. So, so having that template really helped me when I went back to the when I went back to Guam on a site visit, I was able to interview my staff and find out what kind of training they've had, what is their understanding? What are their needs um, in terms of training? Would they would they want something that um, that they are made aware because something is not understandable or or something happens and they're like, oh, I need to do this. Or do they want something where they can go and refer to in case they have a question or a doubt, or even sometimes when they are by, all by themselves and unable to reach out someone immediately. So by having that interview with the with uh, with the various members of the staff, I was able to come up with a plan um, um, by using the template to set up our own um, onboarding uh, manual. Next slide, please. So now I briefly will go over what the CB CDC lab orientation template consists of. So. CDC lab orientation template is categorized into different subcategories. And I like them that way because each one explain, each one tells you like, oh, what do I need to put in, in, in the first subcategory? What do I put in the second subcategory? And where do I get this information from? So first, the general introduction is a good introduction because everybody needs to know if they are, um, because Guam Public Health Laboratory is part of the DPHSS agency. So it is important to know what are our commitments to the community. What is DPHSS com um, commitments to the community? Uh, by the way, DPHSS is Department of Public Health and Social Services. And we cover a lot of different divisions under that uh, big umbrella. So it's important to know who are our partners? Who do we reach out to when we have uh, something that we need to deal with the patient diagnosis? So these are the important things that should go into a general introduction of your um, lab manual, just to give an idea, the, the mission statement, just to give an idea of why we are here and what, we, what do we do and what services we provide. Next, the important thing is introducing your division. So this template, um, although is mostly for laboratory, you can see that introduction to your division could include what are the specifics that are very specific that you would like for your division members to or staff members to follow. Uh, so for example, a laboratory should have their mission and vision 
included in it because we serve as a public health laboratory, we serve the community. And it is very important that patient health and their diagnosis comes first in, in our um, ability to do this, do this, provide this service. And also it is important that we also make sure that um, we provide a quality service. So it is always important to know what is your objective? Why are you here every day? Um, and, and then to know the organizational structure of the lab, who to, that allows you to go to the person when you have a need for, a, you have a specific need. And if um, and you all know, if you're under a regulatory body um, like CLIA, you know that an organizational chart is a must in order to make sure that you have all the important people that needs to be there in order to be a CLIA registered certified. So this organizational charts also provides you with that information. And like I said, Guam had a very uh, young demographic uh, joining in who do not know, do not have an idea about what CLIA is. What, why do we need an organizational chart? How are they uh, fit into that organizational chart? And who fits into that organizational chart and why it is important? For example, if it's a high complexity lab, you all know that without a technical supervisor, we will get dinged on in our inspection. So they need to know why there is this technical supervisor, why there's a general supervisor. And if it is something that uh, a person holds both responsibilities, how they do it. This also allows them to understand how do how they grow in the in the organization itself. So if they if they have plans to move up, they know what kind of uh, licenses they need to get, what kind of certification they need to get. So an organization chart provides all that information um, that they would have at their hands in order to be able to grow. And then there's a very important item, which is code of conduct, con conduct and ethics, because for every lab uh, staff member, they have to remember it's extremely important that patient comes first and the patient diagnosis comes first. And for that to happen, we have to be very, very good and, and main, manage the quality really well in order to provide the best service possible, because at the end of the day, their health is what matters to us, the health of the community and the health of the individual. So this has to be really Retaliated. It is not something, there is no um, yes or a no answer when you're testing a patient. It has to be done correctly so that the correct information is related to the healthcare providers. Then as a laboratorian, we all know that dress code is extremely important for safety and also to prevent any kind of contamination or um, any um, interruption or um, especially when it comes to your own safety. So it's extremely important that we make sure that um, the, the dress code, the safety and security aspects are also well uh, adhered to and understood. So these all, uh, these all go under the introduction to the laboratory. And then CDC also has position details um, subcategorized in this uh, template. Position details are basically for each person, what is their position, what is their job, what are their job duties, and um, all, all such duties. And, and that also helps in understanding what they need to do on a daily, day-to-day -day basis. And they have a clear understanding of that. The next important thing that's there is the training resources. This part of the template really, really helped us because um, we, uh, as a lab, were very small three years ago before the pandemic. And um, when pandemic happened, we were able to expand so much. And that happened in 2009 too, where the first time we were able to do PCR was when influenza pandemic happened. So every time a pandemic happens, though it is such a bad thing, it still also it in a way helps the lab to expand uh, because we get funding, we get leadership support, and all of this helps us to move forward. However, it also, makes things go so fast. When pandemic is happening, you are trying to provide a service that is so fast and quick that some of the things just get um, just gets lost. So one of those uh, is one of those things is training. Training is absolutely important in every lab. And I have gone through different um, experiences in my life, working for um, academia, working for um, CGMP labs, and also for clinical diagnostic labs. And one thing I've noticed is that there is nothing like uh, enough training. 
training is a continuous learning process. And so this uh, template had put us um, into, uh, had helped us to understand what are our needs, what are WAMS needs to be able to add these training resources. And every lab has different uh, uh, needs because, you know, based on your testing, based on the samples you're testing, if you're a private lab, you might be very restricted to only toxicology or only molecular, but all of these training um, resources that you have to understand what works for you and implement them. And I think a training resource should also be something that should be done every year. You should provide this training every year as a means of annual refreshment, because usually one time you do it, you do it and then you forget. If you don't continuously do it, uh, you you tend to forget the most important thing. So I I advise everyone to have. Uh, we usually I used to do it, and we decided to do this uh, moving forward in warm too. That we'll have annual refreshment happening on lab days, um, lab week in April. And it all and and this template also includes standard operating procedures and policies section, which you all know that we have an SOP for an SOP, right? How to do an SOP, and so this is a good place to introduce your uh, staff to to what are your standard operating procedures and policies are. And, and then eventually you should have all the contact information, which should also be in an accessible place in the lab. But having a reference like that really helps when somebody needs some information and they're away from the, uh, uh, from the location where the contact information is posted. But if they can refer to it, this would be really uh, helpful for them in, in future to reach out to the right people. So then what aspects of the CDC uh, onboarding manual have we actually used to incorporate into Guam Lab onboarding manual? We have utilized the general introduction because it gives a very good understanding for the lab member who joins us that we are a part of a bigger agency and that we have bigger objectives and goals as a whole that we need to keep in mind. And then definitely the part where introduction to the laboratory where we have utilized all of those subcategories into our um, implemented into our onboarding manual. And training resources, it's, uh, like I said, training resources resources are absolutely, absolutely important for us because, like I said, we when we st when I have started working in the lab, I was not aware of any um, special training uh, modules the lab uh, members had to go through, except for what they were trained on and like on for competencies and things like that, and then do's and don'ts in the lab. Of course, they know what. Uh, what they need to do, how to use PPE, but most of these things were incorporated into their wet lab training and not as much as an introduction to all of the things that are lab uh, related as a training aspect. Then there is um, contact information we have uh, utilized. Um, next slide, please. So, um, this, uh, so what we have done um, or what Items we have not included in the onboarding manual, the two items we did not include is position details and standard operating procedures and policies. And the reason we have not included these two items in our manual is that position details, we set up a, a different uh, folder uh, or record keeping for position details, the person's resume, the, the, um, their certifications, their trainings in a different record so that when inspections happen, it is easier to pull those things. And that, that the, the manual itself provides an overview, but not details of each and every individual when it is referred to. So for that reason, though position details are extremely important to have, we have separated that from our onboarding manual so that we have it in a separate place where we have all the employee training and um, certifications and education credentials. The other one that we also have removed from our uh, manual is standard operating procedures and policies. And the reason for that is because we do have that already incorporated in our quality manual. Quality manual. Now you will see a little bit of um, things that you will see in a quality manual. You will also see in the introduction of the lab. But the introduction of the lab just gives you um, 
not too many details, but details specific to just uh, the laboratory uh, policies. So for that reason, we have included code of ethics, um, a code of conduct and ethics and dress code into the manual, into the onboarding manual, although we do have that also included in our quality manual. And also you have to remember some people end up give, doing a two-page quality manual, quality management um, um, SOP, but some some people, some folks, some labs have like 16 fold, 12 folders for each section of the quality management. So based on what your requirements are, I just added it into the onboarding manual so that there is one place where they can get quick reference from. Next slide, please. So what we have, what I have noticed when we have implemented this, um, this onboarding template is that we had this huge opportunity for improvement. Um, first of all, you know, going to like the most important thing, like I said before, is the assessing the needs of the laboratory training. Like I previously, I cannot stress enough how important laboratory training is for us to go about um, everyday activities without having an adverse event. It could be an event that's um, safety, it could be a security event, or it could be also as simple as um, not providing the right diagnosis because you have um, not followed your training correctly that caused contamination and that in turn caused uh, fall, um, a false negative or a false positive um, diagnosis. So understanding and assessing what our lab needed helped really a lot in uh, putting together a training modules. And we have included this in the training module is because we wanted when the first time um, on the first day, um, a new hire it starts their uh, job, we would like to give them this opportunity for a few weeks to be able to finish this laboratory training. We don't want to rush them. I have known many a times uh, we had to go through reading a lot of information and taking a quiz in the end. And a lot of times I've noticed that there are people who really went through the whole uh, module and it would take them eight hours or two days or three days before they came to the quiz. And there were people who would just directly go to the quiz, do the assessment, things go wrong, they go back and do the assessment, they do the assessment like six times, seven times, and eight times. <laughs> so it, it keeps, it keeps um, because they think that it, it saves them time. But there's a lot of material in the training modules itself that you need to be aware of. <clears throat> so I think it is also important to not make your training material very laborsome in the sense that it shouldn't be too long where it takes ages and ages to uh, understand every aspect of it to go to the end and do an assessment. So I would prefer that you divide them into different sections of your training module so that the training modules are quick and they're easy to understand. And also, I will uh, suggest that uh, please go through CDC online training uh, resources that can be found. And they are extremely helpful if you are a, a lab that is small and have very few resources. For example, the lab uh, that at Guam we have, we do not have a, a, a document control software tool yet. We are planning to, uh, we are adding it right now, which is iPassport. And iPassport does not give you training modules to buy. Sometimes uh, at a cost, you can buy these modules from the document control lab. If you're using lab, media lab, it is possible to add some training modules and you don't have to make your own tra training modules but you have to pay extra money for that. Um, so you have to understand if you are a low resource lab, don't panic that you'll have to buy something in order to keep doing this. CDC has a very good collection of um, important trainings that are necessary for the lab. And they're going to add few more things that are absolutely necessary while you're going through your um, um, training, uh, training modules with your staff. Another thing I will say is there are a lot of uh, freely available training modules, quizzes that are available on uh, the internet that you can look and make sure that the information that is presented there is actually good information and not anything incorrect. And then utilize them, uh, modify them to use uh, for your own training resources. 
And the manual also provides a basic understanding of laboratory services, because every time you talk about the mission of the laboratory, the vision of the laboratory, you always focus on what is the most important thing we as laboratorians need to provide. If you're working in a research lab, um, we, we are able to... Um, um, if you're working in a research lab, your main goal is to provide good data, the, not, sorry, provide data that is that is true, not, not just good or bad, but that is true. And that is your responsibility to always provide data that is true to what you have, your understanding is what you have done um, so that somebody else can work on it. As a clinical laboratory, it is very important that your service, you have to be true to your, should to, to your um, patients and the quality of the work should reflect patient diagnosis. And so again, that helps you to understand how to manage your uh, diagnosis in a quality uh, manner. So why is quality management extremely important? Why do we even have a, a regulatory body overseeing a clinical laboratory? Because at the end of the day, you are responsible for a patient's health. So this, also reiterates, especially for someone who come fresh off of school, that how important quality management is. It might be very cumbersome to follow all the rules and regulations of quality because everything you do has to be uh, double check, triple check. And as I said, training resources was extremely important for the lab. Um, and therefore it was important for us to go ahead and do that. Then we emphasize um, a lot on biosafety and bio and security. As we all know, uh, as a public health lab, if you're in a public health lab, clinical lab, or any other, um, even research lab, it is extremely important that you have um, a, a thorough understanding of biosafety safety and biosecurity for your own protection, for the protection of your coworkers, and also for your patient privacy. So again, patient privacy cannot be undermined at all. It is extremely important that we all pay attention to the patient privacy. That means we all should be aware of HIPAA and how it affects us, how it affects the patient, so this is just to show if if you can zoom in, that would be great. But this is just to show how we have set up a checklist. A checklist is totally important when you are actually going through um, all the information that you want them to understand or know. So we made a checklist that the new hire has to go through before they start working in the lab. So this uh, checklist, I, I say I'm a checklist person and I prefer checklists for everything, even for... Uh, um, HR, even when you are starting your onboarding process, not just for the lab, but the whole onboarding HR taxes, um, lab um, keys and everything, I, I prefer a checklist because that allows not only you, but your manager to know what aspect has been already relayed to you, was communicated to you and what you need to know. So we have pre, uh, set up a, a um, checklist which includes that um, reading and understanding some of the um, manuals like the laboratory manual, uh, the safety manual, the biosafety, um, BMBI, um, having an active directory, knowing where it is, the IT requirements, completing the lab CE and competency file, we also provide like HIPAA, there's a HIPAA quiz that they need to finish and, you know, um, have it recorded, it will go into the employee employee uh, records. Uh, we also have done a bloodborne pathogen um, um, uh, protocol, but we have not really a protocol or policies, but we have not really set up a quiz for that. It's more of a read and understood one, understood um, kind of um, check kind of kind of exercise and it was important for us to go through that is because when we come in we are sometimes forget that the samples we receive can contain anything or nothing so we don't know so it's always very very important that we keep we are cognizant of the sample we are testing should be protected from us and also we should be protected from the sample itself the ppe training was also very important centrifuge training is extremely important in a lab because centrifuges are known to cause aerosols if they are not properly used. Um, chemical uh, fume hood safety, BSE-2 safety, 
laboratory safety training in general, fire hazard safety. These are the important safety trainings that every lab should have. And it, it's a great opportunity if you can actually go ahead and look for CDC resources. You'll find all of these resources from CDC and which has really helped us because like I said, we are a low resource and, and procurement is a huge process. So having something available to us uh, handy was extremely important. Next slide, please. So after we finished making this uh, template, we finally analyzed how it has benefited us in order to say like, okay, what do we need to add more to this as we grow into a bigger and um, with a higher capacity lab? So the awareness of this lab needs and requir requirements was extremely important because most of this training was given in a way that um, as we go, it was not set up for them to have this, all of this included in their um, training needs. So, so for me, having that awareness itself helped me to understand where we as a lab are at, how important this is for our lab staff, for them to not just know what their uh, lab duties are, but also to know what quality management systems they have to follow, what safety regulations they have to follow, what are the uh, risks uh, that they can, uh, encounter while working um, physical risks um, and also risks that are uh, that help us to ensure control set up in the lab. So in a way, this orientation manual, although it seems very simple and just to onboard people, it also helped us to understand what as a lab we need in order to make our lab a better and a safer environment for everybody working in, in that environment. And then what does the staff uh, individual need from us? You know, as a group, we can be stronger, but as only as, as strong as the weakest person. So it is always important to be able to be aware what where your staff is in the understanding, where your staff is in the awareness and giving them the time and patience and treating them with empathy really helps in having everybody on the same page. When everybody is not on the same page, accidents happen, bad things happen, adverse things happen. And so it it is really was very important for us to have a clear understanding of laboratory policies beyond day-to-day -day activities. And so I would say that this online, um, this onboarding template might look simple, might seem very simple for Guam. If you look at our manual, it might look very simple. And you might say, oh, we have all of these aspects in different places or the same place. Or you might look at this and think like, what else can I add to this? What else can I do to this to make it better? And my first and foremost advice or recommendation would be talk to your uh, staff. Have that communication with your staff. Like what, were, what was your experience? Ask your staff from that has been here for 10 years. What, how was your onboarding experience at that time? And what do you think about now? What do we need to change? What would help you that to come to the lab every day and feel safe and feel like you know what you're doing and not so confused? So, so I would say starting very small, although we've started very small and although our um, manual looks very small, I think it's it's really helpful if you can expand it, if you can set it up for the needs, your needs, and if you can uh, have an understanding of um, how better you can, uh, how much you can improve. So take it as an opportunity to improve your existing uh, onboarding um, um, or onboarding manual, see what you need to add. And just, just it helps you to be more cognizant of the needs of both the staff and the lab. Um, with that, I would like to take, I would like to uh, finish my presentation and take any of your um, questions that you may have for me. Thank you so very much for this opportunity again. Thank you. We'll take a few minutes and to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the Q&A and we will do our best to answer it. If we don't get your, to your question today, we, we will be sure to answer it via email as long as you you submit it um, with using your name and not anonymous. Um, let's see, let's start with some, someone uh, stated that they, they really did enjoy your checklist and wanted to know if you were actually gonna provide that checklist, if you could provide that checklist to them. 
it is part of the presentation. So when you look at the slide, just zoom it in and you'll okay. be able to get that checklist. And I will I will recommend though having a checklist at the time of termination or if the if the staff is planning to move on to have a, a good checklist for that as well, because that will provide you like to make sure that you have all the things that you need back from the staff. And also a staff will know when they are done and have it signed off. Most likely you have that in place, but I would just put it out there too as well. Okay. Um, I would like for the participants to just put in put in the chat um, what resources is your your lab currently using to onboard uh, new hires, or do you have any? If you don't have anything, you can go ahead and state that as well. And then you can also I'll throw in there along with that, you know, add any current needs that, that you see or issues you see with onboarding a new employee. Um, you, Munga, you did you you did share some of your concerns that you you all had with having new hires or you know those fresh out of school I know for myself when I was fresh out of the lab I worked at night I had no I had no lab director in the lab with me really had me and another person um, who worked there at night so you know being someone new this definitely would be like something really good for someone to walk me through Yes, I, I forgot to mention that, but yes, um, this is so helpful for especially people who work graveyard shift. I know this because mm -hmm. I have been um, a part of a um, um, lab before where we actually had people coming in at nine o'clock, 9 p.m. Yeah. and they would work until 6 a.m. And first, and, and it is so hard because you do not have that many people. You do not have supervisors working at that time. Um, mm -hmm. And I have done this everywhere I went. I actually had stayed back. I have made sure that I stay or I come around that time and make sure that they're comfortable. And I would suggest that every supervisor, please, if you could do this, spend that week with your um with your staff, with your new staff who are working at odd hours, because it really helps them to have that confidence that they're doing things right. And there is a huge question of biosafety and biosecurity, and not just biosafety security, just in general safety security at that time. So I think having this, keep in mind that you are accommodating people who are working at odd hours and help them. And I would say as a supervisor, make it your uh, duty, your checklist, to be with them for the first one um, one week, at least to just go through everything else. Right. So how long would you say that it took you to actually customize it? The customization did not take uh, that very long, actually. It was uh, very straightforward. And I, I promise you, you have all of these aspects somewhere in the lab. You have them. It's just that putting them all together. So the customization did not take us too long. All I did was um, what... What took long is implementation, and I'll say this because Guam being, you know, I'm, I'm, the, the, the problem was we had, uh, just when we were trying to implement it, we had a huge typhoon happening mm -hmm. and everything was haywire, you know, everybody was um, helping other partners or, you know, providing services in a quick manner. So when we finally did the implementation time is what took long, just because of how situation was uh, at, at, in the lab. It's not because, you know, we couldn't implement it because of other factors, but implementation didn't take long. Um, I would say start with your original uh, staff, even if you don't have a new hire, have them go through this and have them ask you questions like, or give you uh, any recommendations, suggestions, and have them do all of those trainings so that they, they kind of feel safe and secure and all of this can go into your training records. So I would say, even if you don't have a new um, staff, implement it as if you would implement it for a new staff, do it as an exercise as a whole. Um, so did you find it the template user-friendly? Yes. So uh, because um, I'll give you an example. Um, I like the template because it was direct. The questions were direct. I like what should go under each category was direct. Um, and it was like, again, it, it itself was categorized. So it was easy. I also gave it to a couple of my um, colleagues who are not in the same mm -hmm. division. They are in the epidemiology division and, and they, they actually liked it. Some of it is lab related. So they're like, oh, it's lab related, but we do like the concept of it. And I said, change it, change it to how you want to do it. Like say, uh, for example, you know, we might have the code of conduct doesn't change, dress code doesn't change, 
um, the management of your uh, documentation doesn't change. So there are a lot of aspects except for maybe sample uh, safety and things like that. Everything, your oh, security doesn't change. You still have to have everything locked up, make sure that, you know, things like that. So this uh, template, I would suggest that everybody um, use it for their division if they can, if they don't have one. And honestly, having a template in my hand was what made my life easier because starting everything on your own, you don't know what goes in, you're thinking, you're looking for resources, but having everything right in front of me, I just have to fill the blanks. So that was also, I, I like, um, I don't like to reinvent you. If somebody has done it, <laughs> please give me that. Right. <laughs> so, so this is what uh, One Lab Network has done. And I, I really love it. I really like it. I, I do. And if, as long as you can provide us with more resources, I will use them all basically because we are a low resource laboratory and having um, that kind, and we don't have that much workforce to, to, we don't even have a quality management specialist. Everything is done wow. by one person. So, so, so one person cannot do so many things. So having things like this makes it easier for us not to dwell on it for hours and hours or days together on it. Oh, that, yeah, I, I do definitely think that that's good, you know, especially with the, you know, if people think this new, the workforce thing is is a new thing, it, this was happening almost in the 80s. And so <laughs> some of, our, you know, the people that now in the lab, they were like, you know, happening in the 80s. Now, what are we doing about it? I think that you just said it, you know, if we're creating better documents and, you know, who's it has this concept of, the container store, you know, one good employee to three to three, if you can get one good one, you know, yes. with a great document, I think that we can really, you know, make the lab still and still survive and pr produce good quality sound um, testing results without error. And so, Absolutely. you know, and keeping our community safe. So I think that we can. Um, and I'm glad that you, you know, I know I bugged you a lot about this document. So I'm glad. <laughs> no, thank you for doing that though. because that helps, you know, because most times you're like, oh, I started because I have to do it. So that's why I say that once I started it, it didn't take long. It was pretty good. I, I could finish it in a very, very short time. But we, we I couldn't get my my folks to like send me some of the information, give me some of the information only because they were going through the different aspects that were happening on the island. Other than that, and I, I thank you so much. And I'm sorry if it was like delayed. <laughs> no. <laughs> because no, I know no, you can, no. um, and, 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 and it should not be your job in a way because you're providing us the resource and we should <laughs> be able to use it. But it also helps when you have something and somebody puts it to use, then you can get a feedback. It helps you what to improve and things like that that so i'm very thankful for all the all the opportunities and i'm telling you if you're a lab that don't know where to start if you're new or if you have don't have the resources please go to cdc's website and you will find at least the basic resources and for something you want more i think if you reach out to them they will actually start putting in new uh, uh, resources like hipaa i think alicia said hipaa uh, quiz and training i found that um on the internet with my searches and i made sure everything is correct and I added that to my module but yeah. she did say that they will put in HIPAA and uh, bloodborne pathogens they will add those to the training needs because these two are absolutely necessary for a lab I think so that would be that would be really helpful yeah so so I will say that bloodborne pathogens should be coming out in the next couple of months or so um it has been a work of labor, and I think that everyone's going to find it very useful. It's a very good training. It's, you know, as you stated, you want the modules to be short, but, you know, very informative. Um, and I think that everyone will find that it, that it definitely is that. But that was, you know, also that was helpful. I, I'm glad you, you did say that because we do have a course that um, I have been really preaching about that it's 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 labor intense. And, you know, as a laboratory, when you're testing, you don't have the time to 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 sit and take training. And I think that that's probably one of the sore things, you know, sore spots when it comes to training time. But I think definitely, you know, your idea of making lab week. A perfect time to for everybody to do refresher training 
Um, I know for a new new employee, that's different when they come in, you know, they have a, quite a bit of time to, to do all the training. But when you are a seasoned employee and you know you have refresher training, I think that, you know, taking lab week is definitely a good, you know, good thing to um, to center your training around around that time when you're actually celebrating as well as, you know, refreshing your knowledge to make sure, make sure that you're staying safe. So I think that that's definitely. And you can make it fun. You can have like whoever does most quizzes, you know, in a, yeah. in a certain time or, you know, gets the highest number of um, points in the first go, you can get prizes. So just make it fun if you can, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that is. I mean, that's a great, I mean, that honestly, that is a great idea to do. And I'll, I'll have one other question I just want to ask you. Could you tell me, like, what did you really dislike about the template? Is there anything that you dislike? Um, I will say right now, I cannot pinpoint anything only because we didn't have one. So having one helped. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe as we are moving on and, and anybody who's up here who thinks that because you can see the different categories I put in and if you didn't like that, please let us know. Actually, let, do let us know. That way we know what maybe you know what needs to be added but it's a very I won't say it's a basic template I will say it's a more easy to use template you know like I, I so at this point I don't like I don't have any dislike points mm -hmm. um, maybe the more uh, we start adding we can think like oh maybe we don't need this or we don't need that why did we add this here I just didn't use a couple of the categories like the um, SOP uh, uh standard operating procedures and policies and um and also the training um position description because i feel like it, it fits better uh, because we are making this one um manual for everybody to use uh position details will then bulk it up and then you have to keep going back and forth so i prefer that having in a separate um Thing. It's also easier to give it to our um, inspectors when they come in. So that those two things, I would say, well, I will say that um, SOPs is a good thing to have because everybody should have an understanding, but I wouldn't put the positions in there just because I don't want it to be specific to any one person. So, and if you okay. have a lot of people, it's a lot of information in one manual. So I would just separate that, but, but that's just me. Uh, so it could be it could be anybody else would have actually like that, but that I would say if anything, I would say that's the only one really, and that's not really a problem. So, all right, I thank you again, Martha, for for presenting and to taking the time to actually using our template and giving us feedback. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, actually, for the. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, we are offering one PACE credit for today's webinar. To receive PACE credit, visit the link or use the passcode posted in the chat to complete the evaluation within two weeks. You will receive an email containing these instructions if you miss the link in the passcode. We would like to briefly highlight, I, hold on just a moment. We'd like to briefly highlight an upcoming One Lap Network event on February the 6th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This event is called Managing Burnout in a Post-COVID World. It will guide, will guide participants in developing strategies to cope with, that, with burnout, and will, it'll be presented by Ms. Nancy Lewis, who is also a former um, MedTech. The registration link is posted in the chat. Next slide, please. We would also like to invite you to register for the One Lab um, Summit. This is a free virtual event that, is, that connects laboratory professionals in real time to support and unify a response to laboratory education and training needs. Attendance is open to anyone interested or involved in, lab in the laboratory profession. Registration is now through the link in the chat. Next slide, please. As a reminder, the slides and audio recording of this event will be posted to our website within two weeks of today. Next slide, please. Lastly, I encourage you to utilize the OneLab inbox to share your training needs um, and your feedback on OneLab 
um, with one lab on, with us. Um, we use actually use a lot of your input for our event topics and it and get a better understanding of what the community needs. The one lab email address is posted in the chat for easy access. And again, I would like to say thank you for joining today and have a great rest of your day.